What is up guys, it's Bobgar and it is uh, 10 ticket deck time again, $10 deck. Uh, we are looking at a 10 ticket modern mono black zombies list. It's pretty sweet, it's very grindy and also pretty fast and aggressive when it needs to be. It's kind of a neat combination of proactive and grindy so let's let's jump right in and take a look. The one drop is certainly the hot spot in the deck. We are running 16 one drop creatures that's not even all the one drops in the deck but we're running 16 creatures at the one drop slot that's a huge number uh leads the deck to often be very aggressive if you get a good draw a lot of times you can just win turn four so pretty sweet uh the most important one drop we have even though it's the only one without two power so it's the least aggressive is easily crypt breaker crypt breaker draws this card in the gravity matchups and even in the aggro matchups a lot of times putting in a 2-2 at for two mana is is really good for us especially when we combo out with the next card there grave crawler you can pay two mana and tap discard the grave crawler and then you can just play the grave crawler from the graveyard so it's almost like gets you a uh, free 2-2 two -two zombie token uh so then obviously grave crawler comes up it is a 2-1 it cannot block which is not very good but it's you know a 2-1 one for one is still pretty sweet and you can cast it from your graveyard as long as you control a zombie. We have a lot of zombies in the deck. Usually we'll be able to control a zombie and just bring these guys back. That's where a lot of the power and grindiness of the deck comes from for sure. So super sweet card in the deck. Dread Wanderer. It's a little bit like a worse grave crawler. It doesn't have the zombie restriction, which can be kind of nice. Like if we get board wiped late game and we have an empty hand, we can just bring back Dread Wanderer from our graveyard to play. And then as soon as that's back in play, we can just play out all our grave crawlers from the graveyard. But yeah, it, it's a 2-1 one for 1. It comes into play tapped, which sucks. It can block, which is kind of nice. And uh, it has a similar thing where you can play it from the graveyard, but it costs 3 mana, and you can only do it if you have 1 or less card in hand. So not super common early game to come up, but later game, it sometimes uh, can can be worth paying the 3 mana to bring it back in, and especially in grinding matchups. So just a pretty good 2-1 one for 1 with a pretty sweet ability. So yeah, I like the card a lot. And then the weakest of our one drops, Diagraph, Ghoul. He has the biggest body, but he's just a 2 2 for 1 that comes into play tapped. Still, a 2 2 for 1 is a very good rate in Magic. And uh, he's, he's, he's quite good, just not quite as good as the other some of the other ones. He at least can block, which is kind of nice. Um, I, like I said, Gravecrawler can't block, so that's a pretty big disadvantage for us. But, but uh, Diagraph, Ghoul certainly can. So that's all the one drop creatures, all 16 of them. Let's move on to the two and three drop creatures. Uh, the two drop. Our only actual zombie creature is Rotting Rats. Rotting Rats is interesting. It has the same kind of discard synergies that Crypt Breaker does. Uh, when it comes into play, each player discards a card. So you and your opponent both discard a card. But usually we'll be discarding one of the couple zombies that we can just bring back anyway. So it's much less of a uh, problem for us than it usually is for our opponent. And when Rotting Rats is in the graveyard, you can also cast it from the graveyard for two. You can unearth it. That brings it back into play until the end of the turn uh, with haste. And then you have to exile it. But when it comes back into play, again, everybody discards a card you do as well as your opponent. So again, like you can play a Rotting Rat, discard a Rotting Rat, then play the one from your graveyard, discard a Grave Crawler, play the Grave Crawler. We have these graveyard synergies that let us play things from our graveyard. So the ability on it to make each player discard a card is super advantageous to us as compared to our opponent. Uh, continuing along the discard lines, we have a Smuggler's Copter. It's a 3-3 flying uh, artifact vehicle. So it can turn into a 3-3 flying creature uh, if you crew it. Crewing it takes one, which means you have to tap a creature with one power in order to crew it. And uh, once it's crewed, it has a super cool ability. When it attacks or blocks, you get to loot. So you draw a card and discard a card. As we've seen, for us, discarding a card is often super advantageous. Uh, if we're in a position where we need lands, we can shove creatures to the graveyard and draw ourselves land. If we're flooded, we can get rid of our lands and draw more creatures. And a lot of our creatures we can just play from the graveyard. So super effective in our deck. And it's really our only answer to flyers and, and gives, has a little bit of uh, ability to get through. It's possible that three is too many, but three seemed right to me. So I put in three. I like it a lot. I think it's really good. And then we get into our three drop creatures, all of which are lords. We're running eight total Three drop zombie lords, they both give all zombies plus one plus one. And the common theme between them is they're really about helping our little weenie creatures so we can keep playing break through our opponent's line. So Death Baron is the probably the best, the probably the most important one. He has skeleton creatures you control and other zombie creatures you control get plus one plus one and have death touch. So if you're swinging one with a 2-1 with Death Touch, your opponent is very unlikely to block it with any normal creature, like the creature that's not like yours that can't just easily recur. So that's super powerful and lets us trade up a lot of the time 
And Lord of the Curse is also other zombie creatures you control get plus one plus one. And then his ability is you can pay two mana and tap him. All zombie gain menace until end of turn. So menace is they have to be blocked by at least two creatures. Uh, again, this just makes it really hard for our opponents to block our creatures efficiently. And helps us push through damage on turn four plus. So that's those are the two zombie lords that I like to run. And then there's some non-creature spells. I mean, I guess technically uh, Smuggler's Copter is also a non-creature spell, but these are really instants and sorceries. Uh, three Ghoul Callers chant. You don't want to go super high on this. This is basically a super efficient recursion spell. It makes it, us care even less about discarding cards to our graveyard. You can either return a single creature from your graveyard to your hand, or you can re return two zombie cards. And note it doesn't say creatures. Just says zombie cards, and that's going to be important because of our, our next card here. So one mana return two cards to our hand is basically what this does. Our next card here is Nameless Inversion. Uh, it's a tribal instant shapeshifter. It has Changeling. It means this card is every creature type at all times. Uh, so what that means is when this is in the graveyard, it is and or in your hand or anywhere else, it's technically a zombie card. So Ghoul Callers can't chant can return this. Can return like two copies of this or this and one of your zombie uh, zombie creatures from your graveyard to your hand um and this get has target creature gets plus three minus three and loses all creature types until end of turn uh, the losing all creature types isn't the most important part the big part is plus three minus three usually that just lets you uh you know kill a, a creature easily Although losing all creature types can be important too if your opponent's running a bunch of lords that are pumping each other and things like that but usually it's just kill a creature with three toughness or less uh sometimes you will use it on your own guy to push through damage but it's pretty uncommon most of our zombies have a little trouble getting to four toughness to make that good but it happens occasionally and then finally we're running two copies of sign and blood sign and blood is probably the card i'm least sure about in the deck just because i don't know if we need that much but we are kind of a grindy deck and it is nice to have a little bit more reach i think two is about the right number i don't think i'd run more than that it's uh Two mana, target player draws two cards and loses two life. So hurts us a little bit, gives us two cards. Very, very rarely we can also use it to take the last two life off our opponent or something like that. But basically it's a draw two for two mana, which is quite good. All right, so those are the instants and sorceries. Now let's talk about the lands. This side is, slide is super exciting. We run 20 swamps. This is a breath of fresh air from last week when we had like six different lands on the screen. Uh, this is this is nice and simple. 20 swamps, that's all it is. Uh, we run a little higher than your, the curve might indicate, and that's mostly just because when we don't need the swamps, it's easy enough to discard them, and it sucks to not get the swamps. But yeah, we have lots of ways to discard them, so if we end up with a five swamp hand, sometimes it's not even that big a deal because we can just smugglers copy them away or turn them into two shoe zombies with a crypt breaker or whatever. All right, and then we're on to the sideboard. So I kept the sideboard pretty simple this time. It's five three ofs, uh, three ghost quarters against Tron type decks, Valakit type decks, things like that. Three duress, mostly to fight against combo-y things, but could be good in other places too. Uh, like maybe take out graveyard hate from people's hands or whatever we're worried about. Three Nahil spell bomb. This gets rid of graveyards. So I'm, I'm kind of running this instead of. Uh, Bajuka Bog, which is what I've been running in the last few black decks I've done, because I've started to feel like being able to interact with graveyards at instant speed is super important. And the Hellish Spell Bomb is just, it's pretty good. One mana, you put this out uh, at instant speed, you can sacrifice it to get rid of a target player's graveyard. And if you have a black mana up, you can also get draw a card off it. So a little bit like Tormod's Crypt, but it can replace itself. And I thought that in our deck that was pretty important. Um, three, Dragon's Claw. This is just in against red decks so that we can gain a little bit of life against red decks and grind a little better with them. Our deck does cost ourselves a little bit of life. And then Lost Legacy, I'm running as a three of as well. Uh, pretty much again, just for those combo decks. Uh, if you're against Ad Nauseam, having a Lost Legacy is really nice. Just exile a given card from your opponent's hand, graveyard, and deck. You know, get rid of all their Ad Nauseams. Ad Nauseam folds pretty hard to that one. So, pretty good card in a couple matchups. And so that's the sideboard. Let's look at the deck as a whole by, by mana curve. So this is from Magic Online. We can kind of look at what the curve of our deck looks like. Like I said, it's super heavy on the one drops. And we definitely can win turn four. Not turn three, the deck can't do. But turn four, we can win if we go like one drop zombie into two more one drop zombies into a zombie lord. And then you just swing twice. You swing turn three and swing turn four and it's, it's over basically if he can't really block you so 
Um, I mean, if you're a zombie lord into zombie lord, it's a lot of overkill, and even if he blocks you, he probably can't stop you. So yeah, turn four is not unreasonable in the deck. Sometimes it takes till turn five, especially if you're intentionally playing it a little grindy because you think you're going to need some extra cards. So you like do one drop into one drop into one drop, but uh, turn two, when you drop the next two one drops, you're actually, instead of attacking with the first one you played turn one, you're tapping all three to draw a card off Crypt Breaker or something. You know, obviously, the stuff like that's going to slow you down. And that can be worth it depending on what the matchup is. Uh, hopefully by turn two, too, you've kind of figured out how aggressive your opponent is and whether getting in damage quickly versus drawing cards versus you know putting out two two uh zombies off of Crypt breaker is more important like how to play the matchup because the deck can kind of play in a couple different ways uh, but that's that's that and then we'll look at the deck as a whole so there's good news and there's bad news uh the main board was like i think just under ten dollars uh with the sideboard it came up around 11 on magic online so the magic online price for this deck is super super cheap and i expect it to even come down a little bit over the next two weeks uh so the bad news is the paper price of the deck 140 dollars in paper uh as you can see well over half of this is from the death baron he is pretty powerful, but he's just super expensive in, in paper, even though he doesn't really see very much play. He's $20 a pop. And yeah, I, I think if I was making the deck in paper and I wanted to make it budget, he is what I would cut. Not that he's not a good card. He's great. But he's, uh, you know, if you're trying to make it budget, $20 per card is just more than you can really afford. But yeah, other than that, this is the deck. It looks pretty good to me. I, I love Crypt Breaker as a headliner. It was probably between... Uh, Crypt Breaker and Gravecrawler both are pretty powerful, but I think Crypt Breaker is actually more important to the identity of the deck. He's the more unique card. All right, let's look at the uh, paper price. Like I mentioned, Death Baron is eighty-five dollars. Um, so if you swap out the four Death Barons for four Cemetery Reapers, you go from one hundred and forty-one dollars all the way down to seventy dollars. Admittedly, Cemetery Reaper is definitely not nearly as good. He basically is a zombie lord. He doesn't do the death touch thing, and he has an ability instead where you can pay three mana and tap him, exile a creature from your graveyard, and put in a 2-2 zombie. Still pretty good. Still pretty reasonable. The deck would still play pretty well because a lot of its power... I mean, I would say Death Baron is probably the third most important card in the deck, which obviously means he's still pretty important. But the first two most important cards in the deck are Grave Crawler and Crypt Breaker, in my opinion. Um, and, and Death Baron's probably around third. That Death Touch does get really nice, help you, helping you push through damage. He does a little bit of a better job than the other Zombie Lord in there. But yeah, I think you could replace him for another Zombie Lord, and it would still be a very powerful deck. So I don't, I don't feel too bad about that. Uh, then I think we have a matchup slide. I think we're a little too slow against aggro. Like, we are an aggro deck, but I think Burn can run us over before we can win. We're a little, we tend to, we tend a little bit too much towards Grindy. Uh, if we get a really good draw, we can beat them, but I think we're less than 50%. And, and same with Zoo. Uh, enough of our creatures can't block that. I think Zoo is a little tricky. I, I think, again, we can beat them, but I just think it's a little bit tricky. I think we're probably not favored in those matchups. In my testing, I actually, so far, I've played, I think, four matches, maybe five, and I've won every single one. And most of those were... I think most were control, but they're either control or mid range. And against both control and mid range, I think we are extremely favored. Uh, we act aggressive, so we get them under the gun really quickly, so they have to start trying to control us super early. And we fight through their control really well. We're just a little too grindy for them. Uh, Crypt Breaker drawing us cards just outvalues a lot of them. And. The fact that we can just play grave crawlers back from the graveyard again it just outvalues them i had games where i was supposed either they cast supreme verdict they wiped our board i played a zombie lord i was at like five mana played a zombie lord put two grave crawlers in play and it's like okay you're dead on board again what do you do do you top deck another supreme verdict because otherwise you lose the game and they didn't so we won so I, that's just how those games felt to me it's like yeah they can sweep our board but we, we have too much recursion to for that to end well for them i mean obviously they can bring in graveyard hate against us but then they have to find it. I don't know. I still think, I think we're favored in those matchups. And, and the same kind of goes for those mid rangey matchups. They have some cre more creatures that can block to slow us down too. But when we give them Death Touch or in Menace, it gets really hard for them to stop the last few ticks of damage. And then we usually pull those out. Uh, combo is probably, that is probably our most troublesome matchup. Like against the aggro decks, I don't think we're favored against creature or uh, instant sorcery aggro, but we can win just by getting, you know, getting a good draw and having them have a very slightly awkward draw. It just doesn't take that much for us to win. We don't have very much to stop combo. So if a combo deck gets its good draw and combos off, we're just going to lose. Likewise, Tron is pretty problematic. Eugen isn't 
not not Eugene. Eugene is super scary. Karn's not that scary, and we can flood the board enough that Karn has a little trouble dealing with us. But still, it's just it's a little awkward. They have a lot of sweepers. Um, quite a few of them exile, although not all. Of them. I guess only Eugene exiles. Now that I think about it, but they they make it our life a little hard. So big mana and combo. I think we're both a little bit weak too. So we'll see how that plays out. I didn't run into that, any of them in testing so far. I feel a little like unfortunate with my testing. I like to lose a little bit in my testing so I can tweak the deck and. I built the deck and I pretty much won every match I tested in, which makes it harder to tune the deck. I don't expect that kind of luck when we actually play our matches, but you never know. Hopefully, hopefully at least it does pretty well, goes 2-3 or 3-2 or somewhere in there. Uh, I don't think I'm going to run it through a league. I don't think it's quite at that league level. I should have run the last one through a league, even though I didn't. But yeah, I don't think this one's quite at the level to run through a league, but it's pretty powerful. I think it's pretty fun. All right, and then I wanted to bring up the viewer request slide again because this is another viewer request. Uh, Mephisto Negative requested that we look at a Zombies Tribal deck, and that is what we were doing this week. Uh, last week, we obviously did Black White Tokens. Before that, we did Sundial. Before that, we did Core Tribal. And a couple weeks before that, we did Control. So we're slowly making our way through a lot of these. I'm not doing them in any particular order. I'm just kind of picking out the ones I feel like doing or feel like are interesting. Part of the reason I chose Zombies this week is because the prices are really starting to tank as we get close to rotation on the ones that are currently in standard, uh, the zombies that are currently in standard, and I think they work pretty well. I think they're pretty good. All right, so that's the uh, deck for the week. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to go play some games, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys, Bobgar here. I just really wanted to quickly say, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you enjoy my content in general and would like to see more of it, subscribe. I'll be coming out with more content in the future. And please leave me comments and let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, both in terms of production and in terms of my play and my deck building and all that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you guys next time.